everybody, Pokey here. Um, so if you've seen my favorite quirks video, um, I'm not going to rehash that video, but um, but I have a favorite quirks video where I go over kind of quirks of mine. Um, one of them is if I'm watching anything that has to do with food, such as like MasterChef or, um, or the Chef Show or uh, even Ratatouille, I have to have food in front of me because food is my soulmate, okay? I have to have food. All it, like, I love food so much. Um, it's just something about food and trying new food or fusion or just food in general is amazing. So if I'm watching something that has to do with food, I have to be eating something, even if it's just a snack or just like a full on meal. I just, I have to have food in front of me. That's one of my quirks, okay? Um, but I'm going to do Disney quirks this time. Um, sorry, there's a glare on my glasses. I'm in front of my window and it's daytime, so I don't have like the light shining behind me. Um, you can see more of my mess behind me now, but whatever. I mean, I'm <laughs> sorting through more stuff again because, well, I'm trying to reorganize to get more space for my work area, which is what this desk is, uh, because I'm working from home. So, yay, paycheck, that's awesome. It's very frustrating to work from home though when you've got a very energetic toddler and a six-year-old with ADHD that just anyway um so yeah it's it's a mess but whatever uh so that little example of one of my quirks so now I'm doing Disney quirks yes I have Disney quirks I think everyone has a particular you know specific quirk or you know way they do things about lots of topics but um I really want to say this is my OCD, and that's the reason why I have these quirks when it comes to Disney. This is just a few. I probably have a lot more, but this is just what I've written down. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and start. Uh, so I already said that uh, in one of my other quirks, actually, for the other video, I got like stuff on my my desk. I don't know what this is. Um, anyway, uh, that sometimes if I'm watching a certain theme of movie or whatever, I will want to read a book that's kind of the same theme. So if I'm watching like Robin Hood or something like MCU and I see Hawkeye, maybe I want to read like a Robin Hood story or, or a, a vigilante movie, you know, like book or something if I'm watching a vigilante movie like Batman or something. Um, so I might want to do an online like comic on Batman or something like that or, or the Avengers. So that's like one of my other quirks. I do the same with Disney. So if I'm watching one movie that has a certain theme, I will want to watch another movie that has the same theme. Examples are if I'm watching Brave, I will want to watch Robin Hood. Um, and eventually I might go towards MCU because there's Hawkeye in that and I will want to watch the Avengers or Avengers Age of Ultron or something, you know? Uh, so, or... The other one is uh, superhero stuff, so like Incredibles and Bolt and, you know, something that has like a superhero theme. Um, so I will watch those after the other. It's kind of like a themed marathon in Disney, strictly. Now, I do like that MCU is now part of Disney. Um, if it's Star Wars, I definitely will stick strictly with Star Wars. If it's Pirates, I will stick strictly with Pirates, you know. So like I will, in Disney, I will have these themed <laughs> marathon sorry I'm still coughing I'm still sniffly because a few days ago I had to do some yard work because there was some inclement weather coming our way for the weekend so after all the uh, raking and mowing that I'd done the week before there were some heavy winds that kind of blew everything all over my lawn in the back so I had to kind of bring it all together and thankfully I was able to get some more um garden garbage bags so I was filling that up and I got some new gloves because my other ones were so worn through um so I was able to kind of pick stuff up but unfortunately because the wind's being so messed up a lot of the pollen and leaves and other things started to mess with my sinuses and when my allergies my seasonal allergies get the best of me um it takes me down like it destroys my sinuses and everything to do with it for like a couple weeks at least. So um, taking Benadryl has helped kind of loosen some of it and Mucinex as well, but I still am sniffly and my throat still gets messed up. Um, so I'm still dealing with that a few days later. Um, 
But anyway, uh, I totally lost my train of thought. Um, but yeah, no, themes. So I, I do themes uh, in marathons when it comes to movies. So that's one of them. Um, the other one I wrote down. So I tried to not buy Disney figurines unless I can accommodate a complete set. Like, you know, everyone's got their favorite Disney whatever. So a lot of people really obsess over, like, Winnie the Pooh. They obsess over, like, Mickey Mouse or one of the Disney princesses or some other character. Um, now Star Wars, MCU, they're part of, like, that family. So, you know, definitely. Or the Simpsons, they're part of the family now. Um, so people will collect figurines or collect, like, items that are have that theme. Um, I try not to unless I can do a complete set because I'm really big on having a complete set. One of those, for instance, um, so I have this, which is the little security baby blanket that I got Connor. Um, and I was really excited because it came with a, a lot of other key things, but I was really excited. I happy, I was so happy because like, I love Winnie the Pooh so much. I grew up with Winnie the Pooh and I don't really love Winnie the Pooh growing up. And Connor, of course, loves Winnie the Pooh, so he loves having this. But I found a vintage Winnie the Pooh when I was at Goodwill a while ago. And I was just like, oh my gosh, Winnie the Pooh. So, yes, I keep this in my room most of the time because I like having my Winnie the Pooh. I am not ashamed. I will have Winnie the Pooh on my bed. Thank you very much. Um, but I also found an old Tigger and Eeyore at, at Goodwill. So I was super excited. Um, Way the Pooh is one of those ones where I will collect a complete collection of. So now I still need Piglet and Rabbit and Owl and Kanga and Roo. Um, it'd be nice if I could find a gopher because that would be awesome. Um, if, I don't know if they made them. Did they make like Heffalumps and Woozles as well? That would, that would be kind of cool too. So that's, so I like to collect you know, I like to have the collection, the complete collection, if I'm going to get one of them. Um, the same goes for stuffed animals. I try not to get stuffed animals that are Disney-themed unless I can get the collection of them. Um, one-offs are okay. Uh, there's one of the 101 Dalmatians stuffed animals that I found at Goodwill that, that Connor really, really wanted. So I got that for him before Christmas last year. Um, and then we were gifted with one of those Zoom Zoom, like big Zoom Zoom style dories um that one of my best friends um who I consider a sister like she got that for Alan a long time ago so you know like I will get you know one off sometimes but for the most part I really want to have the entire collection so I try not to get something unless I can get the entire collection I'm very particular about that especially since I don't really have much space um and I don't have any shelving up so I can't really like position them on shelves um the same goes for Disney themed stuff so for instance, I have one bell pillow. It's go where your heart takes you. So I'm like, okay. Um, but that's it. I try not to get too much more. I have like a shirt that has bell on it. But otherwise, I, I try to kind of keep it minimal when it comes to items for favorite Disney princesses or stuff like that. Um, but yeah, I try, to, I try to keep it minimal. So that's one of them. Um, I am obsessed with Disney themed pajamas or PJ bottoms, um, but only if they're not yellow or pink. I really do not like wearing pink or yellow because it looks really washed out and gross on me because I have like the dark hair and yes, I have like the blue eyes, but I'm very pale. <laughs> like I'm barely a touch over vampiric pale most days. Like you seeing some kind of pinkish or tan coloring on me is because I burned a little when I was in the sun a few days ago when I was doing yard work. And this was in the evening hours after I got off work. And the boys are like, yeah, we don't feel like going for a walk today around the neighborhood, Mom. And I'm like, okay, I'll do some yard work then because I need to get done. There's going to be inclement weather. Um, yeah, I just, I have a lot of bug bites on my face. And I have some, like, on my back. And, like, I had, like, a really nasty one there, too, um, for not wearing a long sleeve shirt like I should have. Uh, I had pants and I had my boots on. Great. But, um, yeah, no, I was, I was just like, I'm just going to go outside, you know, wear my, my, my sports bra and, you know, a shirt, call it good. So I have like, I burn, I don't tan. So I, this is the, the leftover burn is the, the slight pink hue, basically. 
Um, so I don't like coloring as warm colors on me because it makes me look really washed out and gross. Uh, so if it's, if it's pajama pants um, and bottoms or, or just you know, shorts or it's pajamas in general, even if it's Disney themed, I don't care if it's a character I like. If there's pink or yellow or maybe even orange if it's too bright, I will not touch it. I absolutely refuse because I know the color would look disgusting on me. Um, I usually do that with coloring in general, but especially Disney. Because some of the Disney princesses I do really like. But it's but if it's like pink or yellow, it just mm -mm. one very, very small exception. I mean, this is a pillow, so I'm not too upset about that. And I do have a comforter with Belle on it, the 1991 Belle, um, that does have some light, uh, like almost like a lavender mixed with pink, well, more like lilac mixed with pink, um, and some yellow, of course, and gold because, you know, her dress. If you hear screaming in the background, that's my kids in the other room. I'm just leave, leaving them alone in their room to just do stuff while I have a moment to myself. Um, so the comforter, because it's Belle and because it's warm, that's fine. But as far as wearing stuff, no pink, no yellow, nothing. Nope, not doing it. So, <clears throat> okay, now on to the next one. Um... Also, uh, so to kind of piggyback on the whole, like, it should not be pink or yellow when it comes to pajama stuff for Disney, um, clothing in general or items with Disney princesses. Uh, Belle and Ariel were definitely ones that I grew up with that I really liked. Um, I am fine with Elsa and Rapunzel because, like, I really like their kind of personality. Like, I kind of gravitate towards ones that have some of my personality or things that I like. Um, I don't own anything as far as like Mulan though I really liked that movie and because because she was Mulan before she's Agent May to me so <laughs> um so I do like Mulan but uh I if you want to go classic I also like Aurora and Cinderella um part of me didn't like Cinderella sometimes growing up because I didn't like that she just allowed things to happen but really at the same time you think of it she was kind of in a, a not a great family situation. Um, she was trying to still be kind and caring and loving even throughout what she'd been through, but she persevered. Um, so I, I kind of actually like that quiet perseverance that she had because it reminded me of things that I had gone through growing up. And Aurora, I just like her whimsy. She's very whimsical. She's very light and bubbly and whimsical, and she enjoys life because she got to grow up having a nice kind of quiet life and enjoy it with nature and her animal friends and she dreams of you know that far off prince so I kind of like her a little bit as far as like a Disney princess um definitely of course prefer her in blue than pink but that's just because my preference is blue it's my favorite color always will be always has been always will be um but I don't really like wearing or having too many items with other Disney princesses because I like to keep to my little group but I am selective on of course the clothing or items with those princesses again pink or yellow just mm, I mean I'm okay with this and with the comforter but that's about the extent of my yellow or anything to do with pink so um I'm very picky about that that's just one of my quirks I'm yeah um okay so also, Beauty and the Beast may be my favorite movie, but I do love the 1991 and the 2017 one. Like, I love both of them. I'm one of those persons who is not going to judge a newer version of a Disney classic by saying, oh, it's not like the original, so rah, 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 rah. And I'm not going to nitpick about the differences between. I'm going to enjoy it for its own value. That's why I wasn't going to judge the new Aladdin until I'd seen it. I did not like the original Aladdin. I did not. I mean, I love Genie, of course, but I really hated Jasmine. I know that might be an unpopular opinion with people, but I could not stand the original animated Aladdin with that Jasmine because to me, she was a stuck-up, spoiled little brat who, yeah, she was sheltered. Yeah, she, she was stuck indoors and she rebelled a little bit by going out into her own, you know, uh, city, whatever. But, I mean... She really it was all about like 
I want to fall in love and I don't want him to have an arranged marriage. And she didn't really bring anything of value to the story. Like she was just the centerpiece as a focus for Aladdin to make wishes with the genie. That was it. Like she didn't have anything else of value to offer the actual story. She was just the romantic interest. That's it. And she is a very spoiled, rotten little brat on top of that. That's just my opinion. Maybe I'm popular. I don't care. That's just how I feel. The new Aladdin, I absolutely loved because Jasmine wasn't just a pretty centerpiece to look at. She actually added value. She actually wanted to do something for, for her country, for her people. She was smart and she was intuitive and, and she was also kind and she had a little bit of the, yes, I would like to, you know, have more than just an arranged marriage because, yes, that's how it is, but I want to actually have a conversation with my betrothed, with my, my future husband. I want to actually have intelligent thought with him. I don't, you know, it wasn't just the, oh, I want love. No, she was thinking beyond that. She's thinking about actual personality and actually being more than just the pretty centerpiece. Um, and so I... I kind of, you know, put value on the movie for what it was, for its character, for its plot, for things like that. Um, so I wasn't judging it or, you know, on like, oh, is it really going to be like the original? No. So I love both Beauty and the Beast. Like, I love both of those uh, as what they are. I'm kind of happy they brought a little bit more of the French kind of, you know, <laughs> um, classic, like... Yeah. I don't know how to describe it. Like, you know, the, the actual pre-revolution kind of styles and, and, and artwork and stuff like that. You know, I know I've said this before, but I really like that. I really enjoy that they brought the little things such as the men wearing heels, because that is a French thing. The men wore heels. Where do you think it was invented? Seriously. Um, because they were a little bit shorter back then. So they want, and it was a sign of status. So, I mean, that was something that you didn't see as much in the original anime. I mean, like, I know that they had it here and there, but they, it was more prominently displayed in the 2017. So I was like, yes, I like that they added that. I like that they added a bit more of the French, you know, pre-revolution decor and stuff like that. Um, so that being said, like, yes, I, I do not like to nitpick as far as like, oh, it's probably not gonna be like the original. No, I'm going to value it for its own if they're gonna remake something. Same with, they've done a lot of remakes of Jungle Book, so I really don't nitpick about that at all. I know some people are like, oh no, another Jungle Book. Well, there's there's a lot of different aspects to the actual Jungle Book if you've read the book. So, I mean, there's a lot of different ways that you can interpret things and you can present it. So I'm fine with them remaking that a million times because I'm like, I don't care. Um, so that's one of my quirks is that I'm not going to judge it. And I, and I know that... Some people do that anyway, but I call it a quirk because it's something that I'm very passionate about. It's something that I really get very upset and intense about when I go up against others who are being judgmental or squirrely about it. Um, because some people really get in depth about it and I about judging, prejudging something just because it's not the exact same as what they grew up or it's not the same as their classic. So... Uh-oh, someone's crying. Just one moment. I'm going to pause this. Okay. <laughs> Apparently, uh, kiddos were wrestling and some of them accidentally hit each other. And I say accidentally hit each other. Um, quotations because, well, Mommy, he hit me. Mommy, he hit me. Say sorry to each other <laughs> right now. Um, yeah, most of my quarantine has been spent trying to get them not to kill each other. If you have more than one child, then yes, you know how this feels. Siblings are just, mm -hmm. okay. Anyway, back to my little spiel. Okay, so yeah, I a lot of people get really incest about like how something compares to the original and it's, it's not the same, it's not gonna be great at all because it's not like, and I get very frustrated by that because I try to enjoy everything as its own story. Yes, I will nitpick a little bit if it's book to movie, depending on what the story is because if it's something that's really in depth I mean seriously in depth I can understand where some things are going to be left out obviously I mean even writing a book there are going to be some things that you're going to leave out because you have to figure out how does this work in the story itself 
can I really, you know, you're going to kind of look at word count and chapters and length, and you're going to look at, does it add anything to value, or is it really going to take it away if I add this, even if it's something that, you know, I really thought would make sense, or, you know, so you have to edit in general when you're writing a book. You have to edit when you're doing a movie. You have to edit a lot. So, I mean, I try not to nitpick too much. Now, if the story isn't that in depth, if it's fairly simplistic or very obvious, I might be a little bit more nitpicky because I'm like, mm, you probably could have added that entire thing. You probably didn't have to edit that out of the movie. You probably could have had one scene where it's literally like less than two minutes. And from the book, it maybe is like almost an entire chapter to explain something. But when it's visual, when it's, it's something that you can present easily enough, then yeah, I might nitpick a little bit because I'm like, you could have had that from the book. You didn't have to take that out. Um, but I try not to prejudge something based on something that's original because I want to value it for its own storytelling because it's it's being done in a different you know manner. It's being done in a different setting or time, you know? So something that's, you know, a classic movie from, you know, like the 50s or 60s or something, you're remaking it to something that's a bit more modern. Um, but you still have the, the basis of the plot and the, the characters and the story. Well, I'm going to try to judge it based on what it is, not, not what it could have been or, you know, ah, oh, well, they didn't do it like the original. Of course they didn't do it like the original. There's also kind of that creative license. So, um, but I am especially big on this when it comes to Disney and the remakes. So that's, that's why I consider it a quirk because I'm so into it. Um, that being said, also kind of leads into my next one is that Beauty and the Beast may be one of my favorite movies, uh, for Disney, as well as my favorite fairy tale in general. Um, but of all the songs of all the princes of all the princesses in Disney, the Disney um, Sleeping Beauty, Prince Philip is actually one of my favorites because he's got a lot of sass. He's, um, he's kind of, he's good natured. Um, and he has like a very decent approach to breaking tradition because, you know, his dad's just definitely like, no, you're going to marry a princess. And he's just like, this is, I can't remember what he said. Was it the 15th century, 14th century? I'm trying to remember which one he said. It's been a while since I watched the movie, which is funny considering that Connor was obsessed with watching Sleeping Beauty because he wanted to see Maleficent turn into the dragon at the end. Um, but he likes the movie in general. Both the boys will watch a lot of the classic Disney movies. Um, so they'll watch like Snow White and Cinderella and Sleeping Beauty. And, you know, like they'll watch like some, you know, Robin Hood. They'll watch some of that more classic Disney animated movies just as much as, you know, Rescuers. Uh, I think it was funny because they watched rescuers and I was like well then now we have to watch the rescuers down under because we just watched the rescuers come on and of course every single time Alan's like no I'm not gonna like it no I don't like the movie I was like you haven't watched it shush <laughs> I put it in immediately he's drawn into it um probably because Bernard is so cute he's so adorable I love him the entire time he's got that kind of quiet strength that I really admire and love and, of course, Rescuers Down Under is amazing. Like, I love that growing up as well. But, anyway, they will watch a lot of the classic Disney animated stuff. Um, but even still, it's been a while since we have marathon watching Sleeping Beauty. But uh, I definitely love Prince Philip because he's, def he's definitely, like, a, a very carefree and good-natured kind of guy. And he's just, like... Hey, there's this chick that I really like. Now, I'm going to try to ignore the whole, like, I've met her once and I'm madly in love thing because that's a very big theme in a lot of fairy tales. Um, and I even kind of wrote that in my Claire and the Rat King adult novel, novelette. It's, it's pretty short. Um, it's only like 70-something pages, so it's not very long. But um, one of these days I may rewrite it, so I actually have the full story that I wanted to, to, to write, but I only did it in four days. So, I mean, that's... I think it's fairly okay for four days of writing. Um, but anyway, uh, you know, it's that's a theme in fairy tales. So I'm going to kind of ignore that part. But I do love that he's like, I don't care who she is. She's beautiful. I like singing the song with her and we get along. So great. I'm madly in love with this chick. Don't care if she's a princess or not. And I love how he laughed it off with his dad. He's just like, whatever. This is the whatever century. Like, come on. 
this this whole princess thing, whatever, you know, this is this is who I like. This is who I want to be with. So there you go. Um, and I really love the song Once Upon a Dream. So even though I would like something very similar to Beauty and Beast theme wedding when it comes to my Disney wedding, this is my dream wedding once, you know, one day that may never happen, but still something that I really want to aspire to. I definitely would love the whole Beauty and the Beast kind of theme. However, Once Upon a Dream is definitely, definitely one of my favorite songs. <clears throat> I, I don't know if I should, do I even remember this song? Let's see. I know you walked upon a dream. I'm trying to remember the words though, actually. I know you, and look in your eyes so familiar at me. I'm trying to remember the next part. I know it's true that visions are seldom all they seem. But if I know you, I know what you do. What's the next part? You love me at once, the way you did once upon a dream. I think those are the words, and I'm really sorry, I just sing, and oh, I, I'm very scratchy, and I suck at singing now, so I'm sorry if your ears bleed from that. I was trying to remember the words, like, I'm trying to remember, like, the actual lyrics to the song it's been a while it's been a while um mind you if i sing and i suck at singing now it's mostly because i also can't hear my tinnitus kind of goes in and out and at first when they did the test in the navy they thought i was lying because they thought like your hearing doesn't go in and i mean like it does go in and out for one ear sometimes but for both ears but yeah i have the actual tests like the actual document that shows what I said and they're like you're not kidding they did the test three times because they didn't believe me but so sometimes I'll get the ring in my ears but actually my entire hearing has suffered so I don't hear as well in general so everything's kind of weirdly echo you know like you have that kind of cottony bubbly feeling when your sinuses are all stuffy from allergies or from being sick with a cold or something and it's like this and you kind of you can kind of hear your voice echo like that that's how my hearing is in general um, uh-oh, someone is crying again. Just one moment. Okay, crisis averted at the next crying session. Mostly it's crocodile tears, but we're good. Anyway, back to me <laughs> sucking at singing. I can't really hear as well, so I can't hear how my pitch is. Not that I had perfect pitch before, but I still could kind of tell where I was. Um, so a combination of me not really singing that much, me not being able to hear very well so I know how crappy I sound so I can adjust it, and me being stuffy and scratchy because of my seasonal allergies. Um, I hope your ears do not bleed that much. I'm sorry. I was just, I was trying to like think of the lyrics and so the only way that I can think of the lyrics is if I start to sing. Um, so again, I'm sorry, but I'm still gonna post this because whatever, I'm trying not to do the whole I'm embarrassed thing because I'm flawed and whatever. Um, but yeah, so Once Upon a Dream was one of my favorite songs growing up. It still is. Because um, I really like that message. I mean, it's kind of very romantic and, and whimsy and just oh, whimsy. It's whimsical. I can't even speak right today. Eh. I'm huffing a little bit because I've been running back and forth. Um, blah. So... So that, those are my, my Disney quirks. I know it's definitely, um, it's definitely quirky, I guess. I mean, that's just me, but, uh, is there are certain things that you have quirks about when it comes to Disney or any, anything really, it could be about comics or, you know, it can be about certain TV series or, I mean, I have a quirk when it comes to Supernatural. I have to be in a certain mindset in order to watch it. If I'm not in a certain mindset, I refuse to watch it. Uh, same with um, Chilling Adventures of Sabrina because I, if I'm like in a happy place, I don't want to watch it because I will get very invested and very emotional and then I'll be like really upset for a while because of the theme of that kind of, you know, series. Um, honestly, I might just have to wait until Supernatural's season finale makes it to Netflix because I haven't been in that headspace enough to watch it recently. I only watched like the first five episodes or something like that. So, I mean, it's, I have to be in a certain headspace. So, 
Yeah. So, I mean, do you have quirks that have to do with, like, certain, like, Disney or other, like, nerdy themes or whatever, you know, like, other kinds of stuff? Um, you know, and, and why would you consider it a quirk? I know that some people might not consider these quirks, but I consider them a quirk because of just how precise I am about them. Um, how invested I get when it comes to those things that... <laughs> I don't know. Maybe some people might even think that it's, I have like wax. I have like candle wax stuck on my, my desk. So that's why I'm like trying to get it off my desk. And it's, I think that's, yeah, that's what was on my desk before. What the hell? Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. <laughs> um, okay. So yeah. What, what quirks do you have? The, I've got some under my pen. Anyway. I'm going to try to have a semi-normal Saturday. I don't know about you. I mean, I don't know what a semi-normal Saturday would be in quarantine. Um, God, I'm going to have to wrap our faces in something because uh, we don't have any milk or bread right now. Um, and I would like to double up on some cheese and some bacon because we only have one thing of bacon left. I've been trying to freeze my bacon and, and cheddar cheese and stuff. I always get shredded cheese because it's kind of easier to break up than if you have slices and try to, yeah, it's just easier that way um, for the boys <laughs> because I have to make things quick when it comes to cooking things for them. But yeah, no, the milk expired a few days ago. Uh, we only had a little bit left because we usually go through a gallon pretty quickly because the Boys will drink a lot. Well, mostly Connor. And then I don't like to drink dairy that much. Um, I prefer to have dairy in the things that I'm eating than drinking. I don't know why. It's just something that I've, I'm not lactose intolerant at all. Like I don't have any issues with dairy whatsoever. Um, but it's just, I don't like to drink milk. I don't know. I think that's just a random food quirk of mine. I'm not sure. But anyway, I'm going to have to like wrap our faces in something and, and brave the outside world um, so I can go get some of that fresh produce. But otherwise, I've been trying to um, stay away from the outside. Uh, I haven't really seen anyone in the last week other than one of my neighbors next door when I was outside doing yard work. And of course, she was well over six feet away from me, but she's just like seeing me rake up the lawn. And she's like, oh, is that time of year? And I'm just like... Yeah, especially with the wind and all the pollen, and I'm going to be dosing myself up with Benadryl tonight. Yay! Um, yeah, so, but I'm going to try to have as normal a Saturday as possible during quarantine, which means breaking up fights between the boys, um, trying to feed them food that they hopefully will not get tired of. They've they gotten tired of pizza real quick. Because I, I caved and got some Domino's recently because I was just like, I don't feel like cooking. I've been cooking a lot now that, you know, I cook every night anyway, even without, you know, coronavirus. But still, I've been trying to bring some, you know, brevity to the situation by, you know, when I have like waffles or pancakes or whatever, I try to do them in the shape of like Mickey Mouse because, well, that's one of their favorites. Or, um... I used to have uh, Star Trek cookie cutouts, and I, I enjoyed them, but I never used them, so I kind of donated to Goodwill, because I was just like, I don't, I never used them. I used them once upon a time when it was Alan's baby shower, and that was it, and that failed miserably, as far as the cookies, because the cookie cutout, right but it was sugar cookies and they didn't come out as actual shapes and I didn't cut them out very well. Um, and then I did not have all of the necessary frosting to design them. So they're just blobs in semi Star Trek shapes. <laughs> I was like, yeah, okay, this failed. Um, but anyway, yeah, Disney quirks. Um, that's just some of the few. I'm pretty sure I have a lot more. Um, I might start recording them so I can have a Disney Quirks 2 or something. Um, but yeah, that's that's those are some of my Disney Quirks. And again, I'm sorry if your ears bled while I was singing because uh, we've established that I can't sing very well anymore. So, I'm sorry. Um, 
Other than that, hope everyone is doing well and staying home like you're supposed to. I know there are a lot of people that are talking about reopening places, and I'm just like, you know this has only been going on for a few months, but hardcore the only last couple months. If you really want to kind of nip this in the bud, you're going to have to go a little bit longer than a couple months to really weed it out because there's still numbers coming in of people who are, you know, have been diagnosed with COVID-19 or people that are recovering. Um, now, the daycare center uh, that Connor goes to has been talking about opening in May, um, but to a select small group where they're kind of keeping it contained. So I am signing Connor up for that because they'll make it my job a lot easier. Now, the last couple of days have been cool where I haven't had to take too many breaks outside of my normal breaks for work while I'm working on the computer from home. But having to take a lot of breaks to, you know, obviously check in on my, my two-year-old and, you know, changing diaper and, you know, it's it's been getting hard. Um, cause anytime I, the total amount of breaks I have to take outside my normal breaks, I have to work that amount after I would normally get off the computer. So, you know, I get off at like 4 30 PM instead I have to work if it's like five or 10 minutes, I have to work an extra five or 10 minutes so I can try to get my full hours. And that's not too bad, but sometimes, especially in the first couple of days, I had to take a lot of breaks, which equaled out to like 30 minutes, 40 minutes total that I had to work extra. And it was stressful because the boys are yeah, it would be easier to have my six-year-old home because, well, they've officially said, nope, no more school for the rest of the school year, which a lot of states are going through, so I was expecting this. Um, but it's easier with my six-year-old, who is potty trained, can feed himself, can, you know, entertain himself, and just quietly work on some of the school work works that I have for him, which just pretty much are, you know, tracing letters and other things like that. So, I mean... It'd be easier if I could have my two-year-old taking care of during the day so that I can do home with my six-year-old. Um, yeah, so I, I'm pretty, you know, I signed him up for that. But, uh, yeah, other than that, um, just, you know, we should stay home. We should continue to stay home for a little bit longer than just a couple months. Just try to really get, you know, flatten the curve. You know, you, you it's not just a simple few weeks or whatever. No, that's that's something that has to be done consistently for a length lengthy period of time. So yeah. Uh that's just that's that's kind of how I'm looking at it. Um other than that, I know I, I talk a lot about other things than what the subject of the video is. So sorry this is so long, but that's just me kind of tail ending this. Um all right, my next video is probably not gonna be as long because I actually have a specific thing that I'm going to stick to and then try to not talk about anything else because this is all the stuff plus the Disney quirks. Um, I will say that I am sad but also very relieved that the parks are all closed because that's like a hub of you catching anything and everything under the sun when you have those kinds of crowds together. I am sad about hearing like Comic-Con closing as well but again those crowds not just COVID-19, but you can catch a lot of stuff because as hard as they work to keep things clean and, and maintained, there's no guarantee, especially when you have a lot of kids and then you have a lot of people who aren't washing their hands like they're supposed to. Honestly, it should not have taken COVID-19 for people to do the whole washing your th hand things. Like it just, but I, I mean, a little sad, but also relieved because then you're definitely flattening the curve with that. Like you're kind of eliminating this hub of transferring things that should not be transferred, okay? I mean, just a normal daycare. Kids are sharing lots of stuff. Imagine that on the scale of Disneyland and Disney World and all those other theme parks. It's kind of not good. So I'm kind of relieved that they're like, yes, we're shutting them down until everything is, is copacetic. So sad, but also kind of relieved. Okay, stay home, stay safe. Um, definitely try to, I mean, even if you don't have like a mask, if you have like a scarf, something cover up when you're going out. That's what I've been doing with the boys. It's very hard on a two-year-old who is stuffy because of seasonal allergies. Um, thankfully, he hasn't had like fevers or anything like that. He has no other symptoms of anything else. Um, so I've been repeatedly on the phone with the nurse practitioner, so she's still not worried, but it's, it's definitely hard to keep something over his face because he keeps trying to pull it down. 
But otherwise, yeah, if you're going to go out, try to stay covered. Um, definitely, you know, wash your hands, things like that. But please try to stay home. It's, it's definitely what we should be doing. Um, I will brave the outside world for some fresh milk, but otherwise we've been staying home like we're supposed to. I've only ventured out for groceries. That's it. Um, they have contactless delivery when it comes to Domino's, so, which is great. So that's, that's what we've been doing, but stay safe, stay healthy, um, and I will talk to you guys there. So bye.